The sound of computers running, the sound of a pencil scratching on paper, or the sound of trucks driving by. To normal people, these sounds would be easy to ignore, not distracting at all. But to people with ADHD, these sounds could be unforgivingly distracting, causing them not to have their schoolwork done or causing them not to focus on tasks. Today I'm going to be talking about symptoms, risks, causes, treatments, statistics, and quotes from doctors and people that suffer from ADHD. Behavior symptoms, meaning hyperactivity, is fidgeting, students leaving their seats in a classroom, children running, climbing in inappropriate situations, and adults or teens feeling restless. More symptoms that are impulsivity, impulsivity symptoms include blurting out answers in a classroom, trouble waiting turns, interrupting others quite often, constantly talking, and the inability to stay quiet when it's not their turn to speak. The next symptoms are mental symptoms, including not being able to focus. They can't follow through with activities very well. They can't listen very well. Teachers and parents often get annoyed with their children because they think they're not listening, but they can't really control it very much. They miss important details like assignment due dates or things that they have to get done, important details to tasks. They can get distracted very easily, just like I mentioned earlier, little tiny sounds that most people would not notice. They can get distracted from those. And they can forget tasks easily. The last bit of symptoms are also mental symptoms of irresponsibility. They have problems organizing and staying organized. They avoid tasks often that make, that seem really hard to do in their mind, which wouldn't really be that hard to do, but their mind makes it look a lot bigger to them and makes it look impossible to do, so they avoid them. And they lose or misplace their things often. The next thing I'm going to talk about are risks of having ADHD and things that can come along with it that aren't very good for you. The natural causes of ADHD in children are they can be passed down from parents' genes that carry ADHD and give them to their children. They can be caused by having low birth weight when the child is born. They can also be caused by brain injuries while the child is a baby. The next causes of ADHD are unnatural causes. They can be caused by parents cigarette smoking, or the mother smoking cigarettes while she's pregnant, the mother drinking alcohol while she's pregnant, the mother using drugs while she's pregnant, and also exposure to environmental toxins. Now I'm going to talk about treatments and medications for ADHD. So the most common treatment or medication is stimulants, which is pills, and that's what most people that have ADHD and take medicine take. Um, they can decrease your appetite though, they can cause sleeping problems, they can cause tics or sudden movements or repetitive noises, they can cause personality changes, and they can also increase your anxiety or ir irritability. They can also give you stomach aches and headaches. The next symptoms or risks of stimulants, I should say, are they can raise your blood pressure, they can cause you to have seizures. They can give you heart disease. They can give you glaucoma. Or they can give you a liver or kidney disease. And also could give you an anxiety disorder if you didn't have one beforehand. The next kind of medication I'm going to talk about is a non-stimulant medication. And this is the more rare type of medication. And these are usually given if a stimulant didn't work for a person or caused really bad symptoms like I just named. And these can take longer to start working. These can improve focus, attention, and impulsivity. These are prescribed when stimulants didn't work, like I said earlier. Um, antidepressants are also used to treat ADHD and are considered non-stimulants. Now I'm going
going to talk about therapies that people can go through to help them with their ADHD. They can go through behavioral therapies and these, this therapy helps the person change his or her behavior, helps with organizing tasks, homework, etc. It can work through emotionally difficult times or periods or events in their life and they can teach how teach a child how to monitor his or own behavior. Um, it teaches to praise or reward yourself whenever you do something that you know is something you should be doing. It, like, if you have homework and you know you have to get it done that night, instead of pushing it off because it's emotionally tiring for you, you do it anyways, and that's something you would praise yourself for, pretty much. Um, the next therapy is cognitive behavioral therapy. And this therapy teaches a person mindfulness techniques and how to meditate. This therapy teaches a person to be aware and accept their own thoughts instead of reject them. This therapy improves focus and concentration in children and adults. The next therapy is family and marital therapy. This therapy helps family members and spouses handle disruptive behaviors better. Instead of a parent getting upset and angry with their child for not listening, they would be more calm and more understanding to why they can't listen. Um, it would encourage behavior changes in parents and also the children. Um, it improves and encourages positive interactions between parents more instead of more negative interactions. The next therapy is stress management. This benefits parents of children with ADHD. This one is more for parents than children. Um, it increases the parents' ability to deal with their frustrations. So like I said, it's more for the parents. Um, this one teaches parents to respond calmly to their child's behavior. This graph is showing you what ages take medicine or take therapy or neither. The blue is medication only, and these are the age ranges, and the red is therapy only, the green is both medication and behavioral therapy, and purple is the age ranges and the numbers that don't take any treatment at all. So now I'm going to talk about statistics of ADHD in children. Um, 6.1 million children around the world have been diagnosed with ADHD. 62% of children taking ADHD med 62% of children do take ADHD medicine. 47% of children receive behavioral treatment such as therapies. About 23% of children with ADHD not receiving medication or behavioral treatment. About 5 in 10 children with ADHD have a behavioral or conduct problem. And about 3 in 10 children have experienced ADHD along with anxiety. So now I'm going to give you a couple quotes, one from a website and two from two people that have talked to the reporters on the website. Um, the first quote says, so often children with ADHD run up against negative labels that are inaccurate and they may begin to feel like a bad kid or lazy or dumb when this is not true at all. And this quote came from VeryWellMinds.com. I quite agree with this because, like, children with ADHD, I've noticed a lot, their parents think they're misbehaving or their teachers don't agree with them. And I agree with this quote personally, and I don't think it's right. Um, and these two people that gave the next two quotes were asked the question, how does it feel to have ADHD? And these are from two adult women that experience ADHD and can tell us exactly how it feels. Um, B from Florida says, like I need an off button for my brain. When I try to tell others that some of my behavior is due to ADHD, they say I am making an excuse. And the last quote is from Angie, who is from Mexico, and she says, Everyone thinks I do dumb things on purpose. My friends tell me that everyone has an attention de deficit, and sometimes I just feel stupid. So now that I've told you all about ADHD, I hope you guys can go out there and be a little more understanding to people that struggle with this mental illness. Thank you. Nine 